the next carbon fiber plate is here in this box. We're going to open it up later. La I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the suspense. Doing today's run in the Nike Vimero 14. Today's an easy day, a recovery day. It doesn't make sense to lace up in a carbon fiber shoe. Uh, so we're going to hold off on that. Stay tuned. Come on, YouTube. Come on. All right, seven and a half miles in the book, seven and a half miles, good run, squeezing it in during nap time, we did it. Is anybody else struggling a little bit with tightness or I don't want to call it pain, but tightness on the bottom of your feet on the outside when you wear the Nike Vimero 14s? I just going to be, I always want to be transparent and clear with you guys. I'm struggling with the Vimero 14s right now for the last two or three runs. Whenever it, it takes my feet like three or four miles to warm up to the shoe and toward the end of the run I felt good today but in the beginning like it just feels really really tight on the bottom of my foot on the outside of the foot anyway just putting it out there as a discussion starter okay back to I forgot one point yesterday we talked about doubling remember that yesterday so I forgot I forgot to mention a very very important point you can build your aerobic engine by doubling, by running twice a day, not every day, but you can do that to increase your volume. Um, you can build that V8 engine. However, I have not heard a lot of people talk about what happens if you build a V8 engine inside of you, your aerobic engine, but then it turns out you've got two flat tires on your car. That V8 engine is going to be pretty worthless, pretty worthless, and I've seen it over especially especially in the ultra running world there's um overtraining syndrome ots it's called and it's more prevalent I, I i'm sure it's prevalent in the marathon world as well but in the ultra running world r professional elite runners can really fall into this ots this overtraining syndrome so where basically they feel like they need to be running hundreds of miles like, we're talking hundreds and hundreds of miles a month like a lot of running too much running and so anyway i just throw that out there um be careful you can double you can increase your volume but don't make sure you don't have two flat tires at the starting line meaning your legs are shot to you know what shot to you know what where they just cannot turn over no push off no nothing because you are overtrained and you got flat tires all right soon soon ladies and gentlemen first a little dinner time i almost forgot before dinner the shoe boxes in the studio are not staying on the wall no more sticky dots time for some nails time for some nails we're secure now we're secure now all right now it's time for dinner <laughs> No, I just didn't know what was going on. I'm sorry. I, sh I should have not taken so long. No, no. I think. What a king. I love forest. I drew. And I drew. <laughs> Who is this? When I went from the Wizard of Oz. But Here we go, here we go. All right, here's the box. We're gonna get to that in one minute, one minute. First of all, three quick points. Grilled cheese and tomato soup. Does it get better than that? I submit that it does not. It does not, ladies and gentlemen. Point number two. Did you know, YouTube, that we just survived, we just survived the most difficult time of the year to produce, to film, to edit, and to publish a daily vlog for all of you. Why? The sunlight. Finally, the days. Have you noticed where you live, the days are getting longer. Now, if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, I guess the days are getting shorter, but up here in the Northern Hemisphere, I could not be more excited because as a videographer, it's all about using the light 
to your advantage. And so anyway, I just noticed tonight, like, oh my goodness, it's 6 p.m. And I can still see a teeny tiny bit of light out there. All right. And point number three, here we go. Pulling up Strava. I don't know how often I'm going to do this, but of course I am blown away by the Demore Global Running Group. And let's just look here. So 566 runners right now. Since we started, since we started, which I think it was like five days ago, to together, we have all run how many miles? All right, can you take a guess? 8,038 miles collectively we have run. Oh my goodness. This is amazing. So anyway, I am blown away. Thank you for joining up. Demore Global Running. It's 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 inspiring already. And I haven't even really dug into all of, first of all, everyone that's joined. And like I'm trying to comment and like as many of the runs as possible. But just give it time. It's only going to get better. So thank you to the 565 runners who have joined up. It's amazing. Okay. Now's the time. Now's the time. I have my trusty knife here that my buddy from high school made. It's made out of, out of an elk antler in Buena Vista. We used to go chase the elk, you know, hunt them down. We done good. We done good. Thank you, Blake. Let's use this knife to open up the box. All right, guys, this is it. The second carbon fiber plate running shoe, racing shoe that I have ever owned. And I think tomorrow I'm going to give you a rundown on the history of the carbon fiber plates in running shoes. Like when did it start? Who was the first running shoe company to put a carbon fiber plate into their shoes? It's probably probably not who you expect. And as many of you know, the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit completely shook up the running shoe market in 2018. We're talking it was like a it was like a media frenzy. Like this shoe was all over the place, all over the news. Many, many of the major marathon winners were in this shoe in 2018. Um, and it, it's it's being used in 5K races all the way up to the marathon. However, did you notice, uh, somebody pointed out to me that the Houston marathon winner in, in January, so a couple weeks ago, he was in, in, he was in an Adidas shoe. Uh, it was the Adidas, not the Boston, the Adidas... Uh, Adios, I think. The Adidas Adios 3? Oh, I forget exactly, but it was an Adidas shoe. It was not this shoe. So, it's going to be interesting to see how the carbon fiber plate is introduced into different running landscapes in 2019. All right? And guess what? This is this is the beginning. This It's happening right behind me in that box. Shall we do this? Shall we do this, YouTube? All right, here we go. Bum, bum, bum. Oh my goodness, who's it gonna be? Who's it gonna be? Bum, bum, bum. Hoka! Hoka! Uh-oh! That's right, the second carbon fiber plate running shoe that I have ever owned is a Hoka. It's a Hoka. All right, I am opening this box for the first time with you right now. I've never held this shoe in my hands ever before. Are you ready? I'm not looking yet. I'm not looking yet. Oh, it's green. Hello. Oh my, my. Oh my, my. Oh my, my. I always like to take the cardboard out as quick as possible. Tip of the day. So you get that initial weight feel. Mmm. Mmm. All right, I'm just gonna hold the shoe for like 30 seconds real quick. I just gotta absorb it. This is the first time I've ever held the Hoka Evo carbon rocket that's right that's the name of the shoe the hoka evo carbon rocket start the 30 seconds There you go, you just watched my gut reaction to unboxing the Hoka Evo Carbon Rocket shoe. I, okay, and tonight, I'm not gonna tell you the specs of the shoe. I'm not gonna obviously tell you my first impressions after running in it, because guess what? That's tomorrow. Come back tomorrow, I'm gonna take this out for, yes, a 12 mile, actually no, a 13 mile run tomorrow. That's what's in my schedule, and so this shoe is gonna go through the paces tomorrow. I'll get you my gut reaction, my first impressions, everything about the specs. Oh gosh, 
Interesting. Interesting. And that's right, the keyword is rocket tonight. That's right, rocket for the Hoka Evo Carbon Rocket. I can't resist. I can't resist. I have to give you one first impression. Very stiff. And it's so tempting right now to put this carbon rocket on the scale to weigh it, but I'm going to resist. We're going to do that tomorrow. Come back tomorrow. And yes, we'll get you a uh, initial comparison to the Vaporfly 4% and that question of the day. All right. I don't want to get into a debate about carbon fiber plates right now. However, I'm actually very excited to have that conversation with all of you, just all about carbon fiber plates being in running shoes. So stay tuned for that vlog, maybe in the next seven to 10 days. We'll see. But instead, I'd love to hear, and this goes out to all of the running shoe fans and geeks out there. I'd love to hear your opinions and just pause and think about it for one minute. You've seen the Nike revolution. Now Hoka is getting in on the game with carbon fiber plates. Pull out your crystal ball. Where do you foresee carbon fiber plates being in the neck? Like where, where is the carbon fiber plate going to be in 12 to 18 or 12 to 24 months from now? Whether you want to make predictions about other companies, other models of shoes that might incorporate carbon fiber plates, or uh, maybe you think there will be a retraction, like a, a drawback from carbon fiber plates in the future. I don't know. All right, so pull, think, think ahead. This is like this is where the uh, the investor comes out in all of you. Like, where would you put your money on carbon fiber plates? moving forward. All right. Thank you for answering. I know that's kind of a very niche question for today, but I appreciate it. Come back tomorrow for my first impressions of the Hoka Evo carbon rocket. It's going to go on my feet. Yes, I'm going to do, I'm going to do a good solid 13 miles tomorrow and this guy's going to be on my feet for it. So I'm not going to go too fast. Don't worry. Don't worry. But, um, I'm excited. Thanks for being here. The next carbon fiber plate is now on the menu, ladies and gentlemen. It is now on the menu. All right, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. Oh, yeah, I'll get you the specs, too, tomorrow. Get you the specs, too, tomorrow. See you tomorrow.